Greetings, Bill Mobley for the Brain Channel on UCTV, and we're discussing again Alzheimer's disease and the challenges that it presents us with respect to caring for folks with Alzheimer's disease, understanding the disease, treating the, the disease, diagnosing it, quite frankly, very big challenge. And it's really so important to discuss this intersection between what basic scientists do, what doctors do, and what folks who understand drug development might do. In the end, we've got to understand how the disease manifests. We've got to understand the targets the disease presents us that can be therapeutically addressed. And we've got to understand how to go from good ideas to great medicines. And with me is Michael Jackson, who is a professor at the Sanford Burnham Institute who has enormous expertise in the domain of drug development. Michael, welcome. Thank you. And talk to us a little bit about you and then also the important work you're doing at Sanford Burnham. Right, well, thank, thank you for uh, having me on the show here. I uh, think that there's nothing more important today in the field of Alzheimer's than really coming up with some new drugs, right? That is my passion. And I work with people, uh, particularly researchers doing bait, basic science who are trying to understand the fundamental reason why individuals get the disease and try and then think backwards of how could I intervene with this process that's gone wrong, this disease process, and come up with a drug. So it sounds like, um, you know, how hard can that be? Well, it's clearly very difficult, right? So and there's lots of reasons why, uh, partly because uh, we still are struggling with exactly what's wrong and trying to translate that backwards to what it is we're going to kind of go after. What is the component of the human body that we think that we're going to interfere with so that this disease does not progress or does not start? Now that at the molecular level uh, it, it involves identifying the target. The target, by that we mean the component which the pill, the small chemical you're probably going to eat as the pill, is going to interact with. And um, Going from the concept of this is what I believe is wrong to identify what you want to target in the human body to coming up with a chemical that will do more good than harm, first of all, is not toxic, specifically and selectively what we call hits that target, is a very long and expensive process fraught with um, you know, failure, either technical failure in that we just can't achieve and find that element or failure as in the thing that we find, the drug we find, is not safe in us. Fortunately, um, people are coming up with new ideas all the time uh, from, them, from their most recent research. And in addition to that, we're fortunate here in San Diego to be able to act on some of those new findings, taking them to the next step. So starting to the first components of identifying a drug. So that's my passion. I think uh, I love to work with researchers with new ideas uh, go where other people haven't been before, try and push uh, the, the boundaries to come up with what I call completely new classes of drugs. And, and Michael, it sounds like an important part of going from uh, an idea to a drug is just establishing connectivity with researchers, establishing connectivity with those who study the disease, who may have a target in mind, but may not know really how to prosecute that right. target. Yeah, that, that's an excellent point. In fact, you know, the world of sort of academia versus pharmaceutical companies has been traditionally somewhat of a divide in between them. And yet really the going from the concept of what I want to, to molecularly target with a therapeutic and the steps to achieve that is not foreign to a basic research scientist. It's just not what they're particularly equipped to do. The, the process is logical and scientific. It it's, it's, can be uh, in a stepwise fashion. You can do first component, then another component, another component. But you need the tools and technology to help do that. So fortunately, uh, you know, at the Sanford Burnham Research Institute, much of those technologies have been put in place. And we can work side by side with the basic research scientist who's got this idea and see whether we can start off and find the first prototype drug of this new type, right? So that is very exciting. It's something that's only been available in the last few years, uh, thanks to an initiative by the National Institutes of Health in which they enabled a few centers in the United States 
uh, to be able to do these large drug screening campaigns that are involved a lot of ro in robot robots and automation that allows you to screen for the beginnings of a drug. So maybe review for us in, in highlight form those steps that go from an idea to a drug. Right. So it, it, this is simplifying it somewhat, but at having identified the molecular target, mm -hmm. you then uh, generate what's called an assay. An assay is something that allows you to measure the activity of that component. And then by having a, a, me a component you can measure uh, in a miniaturized format, we then screen a chemical library, say of half a million different chemicals, each with a different shape and structure, to see if any of them can actually interfa interface with and bind to that particular component, in the, and the assay reads that out. So those that bind strongly, and what we call selectively, in other words, not to lots of other things, are the beginnings of drugs. Once we have those, we have to improve them, because they're not normally potent enough, I, you, the, the dose would be too high in a human, they're not drug-like enough, which means that if you were to ingest them, they wouldn't go in your bloodstream or into your brain, particularly important for Alzheimer's disease, yeah. uh, and obviously that they're not toxic, very important too. These, that, these steps sound simple, but in fact take many years and many iterative steps of trying to improve those prototype drugs we found to give you just the right level of potency, selectivity, and lack of toxicity to be a drug, to be a sort of once a day pill in a bottle. So that involves toxicity testing in animals to make sure that that's going to, and then what we call phase one clinical trials where we really are testing initially safety in humans and then efficacy in phase two, and then essentially in a larger, more confirmatory trial in a large uh, patient population in phase three, uh, you're looking for the, the, uh, the, the signal that shows you you actually are making a safe uh, drug that is making an impact on, on the disease. So those are really the steps and stages to get yourself to a marketed drug. So it's a, it's a long process. What's that process? normally consume in terms of time. Right. Is there, is there an average? For yes, uh, there, there's, there's averages that people, uh, in fact, there's a recent publication that's you know, showing that the, the variance is anywhere between sort of 30 years and seven years, but with the typically taking between 13 and 15 years to actually from the concept through to the, 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 the drug on the market. And how about the cost? Yeah, well, that's of course a frightening number that people throw out the somewhere between one and two billion dollars. Per drug. Well, you have to be careful how you calculate that. Included in that cost is the cost of the failures of the ones that didn't ah. make it to the end. Um, but still, the, the you, early, have, yeah, you, have the, to in, you have to pay for the failures also, right? That's absolutely true. So uh, you can't sort of say, well, they don't count. So you can't just say, what did it cost for the one that's successful? Now, in the case of Alzheimer's disease, uh, unfortunately, there have been very few successful drugs and even those that have made it to the market really are not cures and they are really not changing the course of disease particularly, right? So that is why there's a huge need uh, to try and come up with completely new classes of drugs that are really going to impact the progression of disease. That's what we have got to, uh, to generate. So if there's something that we can do, it, let's suppose we can create a culture in San Diego where the basic scientists and the drug developers are working very closely together. Is that, is that enough? Are we likely to be successful where others have not been successful? And um, if there's a secret sauce, what's that look like? I, I think this is um, a very difficult um, area in the sense that innovation sort of uh, means embracing other people's ideas, right? So you really have to embrace somebody else's idea that may be rather early in its, in its uh, uh, sort of how it's matured. So um, what I like to think we could do, there are plenty of really good ideas within San Diego, some absolutely outstanding world-class scientists uh, within the community of San Diego who have these ideas. We need to embrace some of those, not take um, what I would consider big pharma thinking, which is really just pick the winners if you possibly can, Rather, try and back more horses, back more ideas. Let's see what happens. Let's see if any of those can turn into a drug. Now, are we doing something completely uniquely different than anybody else? No, we are not. But I believe that we are backing uh, ideas and innovation that is happening locally. And that is how new drugs are found, right? By taking some risk, by going after and going into 
uh, an area of research that perhaps other, things, other people may think that's not a good idea. We, we have enough of a challenge without having everybody only trying to pick the winner. We have to back a few more ideas at the beginning, embrace innovation and new ideas, because frankly, the last 15 years have not been very successful by trying to all rush after the same thing. Right? There's been way too much failure in pharmaceutical companies, not because they don't know what they're doing. Of course they know what they're doing. Right? But they've tried to pick the winners all right, as best they can, as you would do if you were a, sh you know, a shareholder uh, or expectation of a shareholder to, to really go after the very best thing. We have to embrace more ideas, more early ideas, and then see if one of those may, may be, the, may be the, um, the route to success. I think nobody knows how right now. I don't think anyone is claiming they know this, how to successfully treat Alzheimer's disease. People have ideas. Some are more advanced than others. Uh, some of them are very new, right, coming off from the latest research. And those are the ones that need the greatest help to move them forward and to what we call de-risk them sufficiently that a pharmaceutical partner would pick them up and take them through these very expensive uh, stages of clinical development. Yeah, so we, <clears throat> we may have some really clever ways of approaching new treatments, but in the end, the efforts that we're talking about have to be connected to pharmaceutical companies, and, and so they need to be part of this discussion, obviously, in this culture that we're trying to build. Yeah. We've talked about the county effort in Alzheimer's disease, and you're part of that. Um, what do you see the county's efforts being able to do? What can the county do to advance this process, accelerate progress? Right. I, I think one place uh, that we really could try and make a difference is at the earliest stages. Not because the later stages, by earlier stages of finding a new drug, to really go after the research that has just been done, where the findings are made, where the research professor uh, is really, I, I don't really know how to come up with a drug, but I certainly found something very interesting here. Could we build a consortium in San Diego that could take those findings and take them the next step, the next step along the drug discovery route, not really more research, but really along the route of coming up with a new therapeutic. We, as I say, we're fortunate to also have a drug screening capability that can actually do that. So we can do that within the sphere of non-for-profits. And if we can find the glimmer of hope, in other words, at the beginning prototype drug, that perhaps will show activity in an animal model of the disease, that is when a pharmaceutical company would say, oh, all that controversy, I, I forgive it all, right? Now I, I see that, yeah, you were right all along. So I'd love to work with you. Let's, take, let's try this and get, try and get it into, into the clinic, right? That is what I think, uh, embracing innovation and trying to come up with new ideas that uh, are de-risk sufficiently that a pharmaceutical company or a biotechnology company or even a startup company could attract the dollars to do the next step. That, I think, is catalytic in, in what it could do. Well, I'm hoping that the project that the supervisors have underway and more generally the work in San Diego uh, is catalytic. Um, the word that comes to mind is hope. Uh, the word that comes to mind is rigor, uh, innovation, a critical element. And we're happy for your hope and for your innovation. And thanks for being on the program. Well, thank you. Bill Mobley, UCTV, On Our Mind. Alzheimer's disease.